Okay, welcome back. I think we just got done doing uh, data memory, actually the test bench for the data memory. So now we have, um, let's see, instruction memory. We have a register file, sign extender, MUX. We have an ALU. ALU connects to a data memory. Well, what else is in our picture here? Well, let's bring our picture back over to here and let's see. Zoom out on that guy. And um, yeah, we've got instruction memory. We got some MUXs. We got register files, ALUs, data memory. What sign extender? What we don't have is ALU control. Now, if you remember the way ALU control worked in class, and this is where you might have to go back and look at your class notes, the ALU's got six bits coming in, which are the lower six bits of the instruction. Well, what's that? Well, that's your function for an R type. And for an I type, it's just part of the immediate address, but we're not going to use it if it's an I type command. If it's an R type, we're going to use those six bits, which are the function bits. But we're also going to have an input right here coming from the main controller, which we haven't talked about yet. And those are going to be two bits. So there's going to be a 0, 0 here if we add, 0, 1 if we subtract, and a 1, 0 if we need to go look at the function bits. And then the ALU control is going to output four bits to our ALU. Okay, and those four bits, I think in class we said uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 was an AND, 0, 0, 0, 1 was an OR, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 was what, uh, an ADD, and then 0, 1, 1, 0 was a subtract, and 0, 1, 1, 1 was a, um, let's see, a, a, was it set, set less than? Yeah. All right, so yeah, so basically, and we derived the equations. There were four expressions we derived in class that I'm just going to implement here. So we're going to do the ALU controller today, all right? So let's do that. Come along here, project, new source, VHDL module, and let's see, what's this guy going to be called? ALU control. All right, let's do that. ALU control, VHDL module. And let's see, when we look at this guy, um, what do we have coming into here? Well, we got our function bits. Okay? And those function bits are inputs, and it's a bus, and there's uh, six of them, okay? five down to zero. And then we've got the ALU op, okay? All right, that comes from our controller. That's an input also, and it's a two-bit quantity, okay? Zero, zero means um, add, tell the ALU to add. Zero, one means tell the ALU to subtract. And a one, zero means, hey, it's an R type. You've got to go look at the function bits, okay? And then the output of this thing is operation. And we said those were the four bits that are going to go to our ALU. So we've got four bits that are going to go to the ALU, which means we could have two to the four 16 possible ALU functions. If we want more ALU functions, we put more bits here. Okay? 16, for our example, is more than enough because we're only implementing you know, four or five functions. Right? So I think we're good there. All right? So let's uh, finish it up and let's delete all this stuff here. that and there you go there is the VHDL module for here notice I got function in I got ALU op in and I got operation out let's go back and double check the uh, PDF okay. here is function coming in the lower six bits of the instruction this is ALU op coming from the controller which we haven't designed yet and then coming out of here is your operation that's going to tell the ALU what to do with those two arguments that are present well, what kind of implementation do you have here? Well, we designed this in class, so you have to go back and look at your class notes. But the bottom line here is we came up with these equations. Right? And let's see, do I have those equations somewhere? I might even have them. Well, you can look those up in class. You're going to have to see the notes from class. But the bottom line is we need to generate four bits on that operation that goes to the ALU. And uh, operation three was always zero. Operation two was ALU op zero, or with ALU op one, ended with function bit one. And then operation one was not ALU op one, or not function two. And then operation three was uh, function three, or with function zero, ended with ALU op one. All right. So that's pretty much it for this guy. Yeah. So let's uh, behavioral check syntax on that. We're good. Now, let's see, I'm only, in four, I'm only in this video four minutes. Let's go ahead and just do a uh, test bench file for this since we're there. New source, test bench. Let's call this guy T-B-A-L-U uh, control test bench file. Right. I am going to test my ALU control. Next, finish. 
And let's uh, take a look at our test bench file here. Okay, get rid of the instantiation there. Uh, get rid of the clocks. We're not going to do anything there. And let's change up this guy to be the 93 format. And there you go. We just instantiated it. All right. Now, we don't have any clock processes, so we're going to get rid of all the clock stuff. All right, so let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of all this. Okay. And let's put our usual thing in there. Port end. And severity failure. All right. And let's see. Um, yeah, let's go back and do that same old trick we always do. We'll rename these guys with the TB underscore to indicate they're variables of the test bench. And in the instantiation, the variables of the local file are on the right-hand side. Okay. And then down here, this is where you use the uh, variables of the test bench. And what I want to do here is simulate some commands. Let's simulate our type commands. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, pretend we've got some R type commands. And what I'm going to do is um, first I'm going to say I have an AND command. All right, This is an AND MIPS command. And remember it, it takes it's an R type command. It takes three registers. Now the ALU op is going to output a 1 0 because it says hey this is an AND command. Okay. Now, if you look at the function code for an AND command, it's 100100. That's 2, um, 4, hex. Now, where did that come from? Well, that came from your green card. Okay. If we look at the green card, let's zoom this guy down to about 150. Here's a green card. See, there's your AND command. It takes a source tar and a target and puts it in the destination. Or no, that's the AND. I want the AND command. It ands a source and target, puts in the destination. Its opcode is 0. Its function is 24. Yeah, I wonder if I can kind of move that guy over here a little bit. Nope, no, it doesn't seem like it's going to let me do that, is it? Yeah, let's try to do this. And let's try to move this guy back a little bit. Yeah, so here I've got an AND command. And notice, the AND command has a function of 24. Okay. Now over here, I've got an OR command. And if you look for your OR command, where's your OR command? It's got a function of 25. And that's right here, 25. Then I've got an ADD command, which is 20. Okay. Well, that would be up here, hex 20 function. And then I've got a subtract command, which has got 22. Two, right. Where's the subtract command? Subtract command is 2, 2, right there. And then I've got a set less than command, which is going to be a 2A. Where's my set less than command? It's right here, R type 2A. So yeah, so at this point, I've just got a bunch of um, R type commands going into here. And ALU op from the main controller is going to output a 1, 0 anytime there's an op, um, anytime there's an R type command. All right, so at this point, let's save things. Uh, ALU control, let's compile it. And then we'll do the ALU control. Did it work out? All right. Select the test bench and let's simulate this guy and see what we see. All right. Let's kind of bring things back here a little bit. Now let's do a little sanity check to make sure everybody's still on the same page here. What are we simulating here? We are simulating this module here. We're bringing in six bits here. We're bringing in two bits from the controller. Okay, the six bits come from the instruction, the function code. These two bits come from the controller that's already looked at the op code. So it knows whether it's R type or I type. And then we're outputting four bits. Okay, so we got six in, two in, and four out. And let's see what we've got up here. Yeah. So if we kind of, we could do these in binary if you like. Um, yeah. And um, notice, yeah, there's my function. Well, this guy right here is the function code for an AND. This is the function code for an OR. This is a function code. Let's zoom out. 
let's see, and or, this is add, this is subtract, and this is set less than, okay? Now notice, ALU op never changes. It's always one zero because it's coming from the controller. It says it's an R type. So what do I tell my ALU to do? Well, this is the AND command. I'm telling my ALU to AND. That's zero, 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 zero. This is an, a, uh, an OR command. I'm telling my ALU to OR. Here is, um, uh, let's see, an ADD command. I'm telling my ALU to ADD. Here I'm telling my ALU to subtract, zero, one, one, zero. And here I'm telling my ALU to set less than. Great. All right, let's close this guy down. And let's add a few more things in there. So we did a bunch of R-type commands. Now let's come along and do some I-type commands. Okay. Here we've got I-type commands. I've got a load word, I've got a store word, and I've got a 0, 1. Now, those guys are I-type commands, so the function bits don't make any sense. Right? Because the lower six bits are part of the immediate address. But the ALU op, which comes out of the controller, says, hey, this is a load word. All right, I'm going to output a 0, 0. This is a store word command. I'm going to output a 0, 0. This is a branch equal command. I'm going to output a 0, 1. You know, up above when it was our type, it was 1, 0. So let's uh, do this. Compile. And let's see. Let's uh, compile the test bench file and see what we've got. And then make sure the test bench simulate. So now what we've got is several, we've got one, two, three, five R types, load word, store word, and branch equal coming into here. Okay, now notice this guy right here is my and. Okay. Um, ALU op is two, which says, hey, this is an R type. And then zero coming out of here. Well, let's actually select all these guys and make them back to binary. Yeah. So there you go. Here I have an AND command. I'm telling my ALU to AND. Here I have an OR command. I'm telling my ALU to OR. 0001. Here I have an ADD command. I'm telling my ALU to um, ADD. 0010. Here I have a SUBTRACT command. I'm telling my ALU to SUBTRACT. 0110. Here I have a SET LESS THAN. I'm telling my ALU to SET LESS THAN. Now here I've got, actually I've got two commands. I've got a uh, LOAD WORD and a STORE WORD in here. Uh, the function bits don't make sense because they're I type. So the ALU um, controller outputs a 0, 0, and I tell my ALU to do 0, 0, 1, 0. But what was that? That was add. That was the same thing back here when we explicitly had an R type add command. So I'm telling it to add for the load word. I'm telling it to add for the store word. And then when I have a branch equal, the ALU controller outputs a 0, 1, and my ALU gets a 0, 1, 1, 0, which is um, a subtract command. So branch equal does a subtraction, but also back here, this was a subtract command that was R type, and it does a subtraction. So when you look at this guy right here, yeah, you're adding here from an R type add command, you're adding here from a load word, and you're adding here from a store word. Okay? So you're telling the ALU is doing the same thing for different commands. Okay, we're getting a little long-winded on that one, so I'm going to stop right here, and uh, thanks for watching.